everybody, Brandon here to introduce to you the first of my secret projects. It is finally time for me to be able to talk about Tress of the Emerald Sea. This is the first of the books from our Kickstarter. It is out so that everybody can get it now. And I am so excited to tell you about this book because I came up with a very bizarre Brandon world for this. I love really goofy magic systems, if you can't tell from reading my books. And one of the things I have wanted to do for years is have something that involved a fantastical ocean, uh, a different kind of place that you could go where people sail on something that isn't water. This goes back to my love of the fantasy genre. Fantasy genre often uses some of these fantastical nautical tropes, pirates and things like that. But I mean, you can read lots of books about what it was like to sail on our world. I want to give you a story about something different, something far off, a fantastical world. And in this world, people sail on seas of spores. Uh, I didn't want it to be water. I wanted it to be something different. Fortunately, when I was young, I was taught about something called fluidization, where you can take something like sand and make it act a little bit like a liquid. Thing is, I'm not really an engineer. I'm not a scientist. I don't know if this would actually work or not. Hey, Brandon. Oh, hey, Mark. I'm uh, something of a scientist myself. Oh, yes. It's, it's great to meet you yeah, well, in your house well, that I have in invaded. Yes. <laughs> so the thing is, um, I actually, this, this is all true. I was thinking about doing uh, a fluidized ocean. Yeah. And I went to Google. I'm like, has anyone recorded footage or videos of fluidization? And I landed on your video. Oh, really? Yeah. Where you had like an, an entire like tub. You were like in a, basically a swimming pool. Yeah, it was like a liquid sand hot tub, basically. Yeah. Mind bending stuff, right? Well, it's weird. I didn't know. Like I was like, would this work on the large scale? I've, I'd seen it before, like pictures of it or like right. GIFs on the yeah, internet yeah, yeah. Um, of just like little boxes that are fluidized. I'm like, can I really fluidize an ocean? Yeah. And I, I watched your video. I actually had it um, bookmarked. Oh, and really? I would go through it and I would watch it and be like, all right, what does it look like? Because I wanted to fluidize an entire ocean um, and have people sail on it in sailing ships. So well, I, we should do a demo here. Okay. But I think to answer your question though, does this scale up? And I yeah. took like, you know, there's a desktop version here and then I scaled it to, to, uh, to a hot tub version. Right. And the physics are pretty simple. Like, so it, it absolutely would scale. And the, and the key is like, as long as the boat is less dense than the combination of the sand and the air, then, then it's going to float. It's just density. Now, I've heard that you can sometimes like aerate water to the point that people will just sink in it. That's right. In yeah. fact, that's why on like diving competitions, uh -huh. when you see, when they're diving from really high, yeah. they will have bubbles in the water so that when you land, it's essentially softer. Okay. It's, it's less dense. Like that actually works. I thought that was kind of like an old wives tale. Totally that, you know, works. Yeah. Which is why you kind of see it sometimes. And in fact, sometimes like even in the Bermuda Triangle, part of why some ships sink in the Bermuda Triangle is because sometimes you do have these effects where really? air is coming up and suddenly a ship that would normally float on water, you know, the combination of the metal and the air in the hole is less dense than water. As soon as you put air in there, now it's more dense and then you're going to sink. So if we fluidize too much, my ships wouldn't sail in this ocean. It's got to right. be like right in this Goldilocks zone where there's enough air coming up from underneath the ocean to, to fluidize the sand, but not so much that it becomes less dense, less dense than the ship. Than the ship. That's mm -hmm. right. Because if you don't, which I hope in your book, and I'm excited yeah. to read it, my guess is that, is the air always on in your ocean? So it is. It stops occasionally. Oh, uh, that's because good. it makes for a better story if once in a while, then the, the sea, we call it, stops. And the ships just freeze in the ocean. It's such a great image of just like so suddenly great. you're in a desert. Okay, so even here you see apparently we buried some tennis balls. They're just popping up. So yeah, when it's fluidized like this, isn't it just such a, it's so weird. It is surreal how that feels. Like when you really get down into it, it really feels like you're just in a liquid. In a liquid. And, and yet you raise your hand. Yeah. And it's completely dry. Well, and then if you turn it off while your hands are in there, you did this earlier, you feel suddenly trapped, yeah. which is just so perfect because that's how I imagined it. Uh, when I was describing the ships, just like lurching and stopping in place suddenly when the sea would stop. And so someone might get brave and probably get out of their ship and yeah. start walking on the sand like you could. Yep, but, but if, it, if starts, it starts again, you oh, sink. Spoiler yeah. alert, uh -huh. spoiler yeah. alert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, these little, little ping pong balls are less dense, so they float. But if I turn it off here, 
Like they're stuck. And as soon as I turn it on, up they, they pop come. right up, right? Oh, man. Is that not the coolest? Let's see if we can get, let's see if that's cool or not. Oh, yeah. So even this, like, mm -hmm. it just like, you know, it just, it glides like an air hockey thing. Man, it might be easier to sail on this than water in, in some instances. That's true. Like, there's less, you're kind of hydroplaning. Yeah. So you might, um, yeah, like this. Let's see if we get this ball to spin. How rad is that? That is so cool. There we go. And then, boom. Yeah, so we'll spin it. Uh -huh. Even there, it's just like naturally it spins. Turn it off. Boom. Immediately stops, right? I love stuff like this. I don't know. My background, I actually spent a year as a chemistry major. Oh, really? Um, I love, like, I'm not a true scientist, yeah. right? Uh, but I love science. Uh, a lot of my books, I'm like being dangerous and I'm taking like one real principle of science yeah. and I'm adding a whole lot of fantasy to it to make something that is awesome, but perhaps maybe violating a few laws of thermodynamics here and there. I feel like you do a good job of <laughs> at least trying to 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 make it work in the real world, you know, and kind of explaining it without, and it it does it enough that even me and I'm picky with this stuff, where I'm like, yeah, I'll let it I'll let it fly. I like to have one foot in science and yeah. one foot in fantasy. That's right, uh, and see where I can go with that. Well, but I be, I feel like what you've done here then, and I'm I'm really excited to see what you've done with this. But like, this is so actually doable. Let me open it a little more. I'll be honest, I was shocked no one had come up with this before, that there wasn't a book series out there of people sailing fluidized oceans because it seems like such a great visual. I mean, it is a great visual. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. works so well in the story. In the story, actually, the things they're sailing on are also dangerous. You don't want to breathe them in. Mm. Um, they have to keep stuff on their ships that kill the spores when they, if they get up too high because if you breathe them in, it can be really dangerous. Mm. Um, but then it lets me do all these things like you can have ships, they will shoot instead of just cannonballs. They're cannonballs that uh, are like a little bit of artillery that explode into water because if you get water on the spores, the spores grow. Just uh, like uh, that's cool. uh, And so you get these really great scenes, these ships sailing on this green ocean where a cannonball will hit and explode and like vines will curl up like the, the arms of Cthulhu himself and like start enwrapping the ships and then try to freeze each other that way with uh, with vines and stuff. It's, the it's, spores, what's the spores? Is that the actual like thing? Yeah, the, the stuff you're sailing on, the spores. I so see. I imagine them as like their, uh, their encapsulated power and energy um, mm. that if you can add a little bit of a catalyst to. Which is water. Which is case. water yeah. in this case. They will explosively grow. Just drawing, like gremlins. Yeah. Just, yes. like Just like gremlins. Just like gremlins. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they draw their actual energy from, uh, from some fantastical things that are very finicky in my world that uh, we can get fiddly on that I won't get into this, but then they just grow as if out of nothing uh, into these giant vines that will wrap and grab whatever they can touch. So if you breathe those in, it's not good. It's they, game they, over. Yeah, you, your sinuses will be full of spores that are growing into vines trying to find their way out your eyes. You don't want that to happen. I feel like you don't want that to happen. Let's do an experiment here. Where okay. We bury these ping pong balls. Okay. I'm going to bury the ping got, pong balls. I've got these. This is here, hold this. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, is that tungsten? It is tungsten. Hey, well my done. My ring is tungsten. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's how this. So we could set these on the surface. Okay. And now, what do you think will happen, dear audience at home, and you, Brandon? If we turn on the air, what do you think will happen? Well, I think as demonstrated before, the ping pong balls are going to come up. And then what about these? I think those are probably going to sink unless one of those is hiding is something that is uh, not terribly dense. Wow, this guy knows uh -huh. his stuff. Like I, the, can't, yeah. I can't pull anything off on you. All right, mm -hmm. let's see what happens. Yep. I think... I think it's all going to be more dense than the combination. Even stuff. there's probably there's that aluminum. It is. Yeah. But so even, that's even the aluminum is probably going to go down. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yep. The aluminum slower, slower than the others. That's but right. It, yeah. But then it popped away. Mm. Yeah. Isn't this just such a like a cool feeling? I wish Man. everyone could like experience this real time. And then being in the sand, like the actual hot tub. Yeah. Having it like on your body was like also incredibly wild man my job is to dream all this stuff your job is to build it yeah i know that's pretty cool yeah yours is i wish sometimes i could just like write my way out of the yeah laws that's true of physics. yeah you know ignoring you know the laws of thermodynamics is really handy it's sometimes. handy i'm yeah. sure it is you can get away with all kinds of sorts of things if you uh if you don't need to obey those yeah my jello pool actually has to be jello yeah for people to click and watch it
So you just can write your way around that. Oh, this is the one I want to try. Maybe if we can okay. get this to spin like a boat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. In the, in the other video, roll the clip from the other one I had originally where you had like a little plastic boat mm -hmm. and it just slides back and forth, which would be like in your book, right? With the ships. Yep. Are they actual like sh they, ships? Yeah, they've got, they've got masts. They sail mm -hmm. um, with, uh, with, you know, wind in the sails and things like that. Uh, what I probably got wrong is these skim a lot more than I actually imagined. I have them down a little bit mm. and kind of pushing through. I'm always describing the sounds of the spores on them. But at the same time, they're pretty heavy. That's this right. Is, this so is not th that heavy. This is like lighter and yeah. hydroplaning. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think if you had something that had more mass like your ship, right. I think you, you described it right. In the yeah. same way that you can, there's hydroplanes that go on the top yep. of water. Yep. That's if like we this. Put, if we put the aluminum in this, That's right. then... Yeah, you, you, this is definitely not, size. not built, uh, but that's what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah. something like that. So it really yeah. would kind of be that's just right. like a sailing ship. That's right. Um, but boy, that one, uh, that crew is dead. And probably the same shape, like a bow that kind yeah. of comes like this mm -hmm. and it would cut through it. Yeah. Yeah. I was imagining the prows need to be a little bit more reinforced yeah. um, because, you know, you're grinding on this sort of stuff and things. But yeah. That's cool. Well, Mark? I'm excited to, to read about it now that I, I firsthand experienced this stuff. So now everyone else can experience it firsthand in their imaginations. Thank you so much for letting me invade your uh, your lab here yeah. and uh, play with your your tools and things like that. It was amazing. Thanks for coming. I'm and, just, uh, uh, now, now get the heck out of here. I got to get back all to right, work. All right, right? All, right, all right. Through, through the door. Then. Through the door. The through the door. First time we've ever used yep. this door. Can I even get through this door? <laughs> <laughs> it does open. All right. <laughs> Take care, All Mark. All right. We'll see ya. And now I work.